Hey, wrestling fans. Welcome to the One Wing Wrestling Podcast, where we help you navigate the complex world of pro wrestling, bring you the best matches, world-class wrestlers, and news you can count on. At One Wing Wrestling, we bring the elite to you. I'm your host, Christian Nye, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Bill Cuppush. Bill, how's it going? It is going. It is going. It is going. It's uh, it was a, it was a decent weekend, you know. We we got walloped with snow, and by walloped, I mean we got a few centimeters. But you yeah. know, some people seem to like. For instance, if you live in Vancouver, that's being walloped. If you live <laughs> here, it was just meant that driving was slower. I got stuck behind a snow plow yesterday going up a highway, which meant I had to drive thirty kilometers an hour for a while. You know, it's winter. What can you do? But uh, yeah. Anyway, how was your weekend? The weekend was was good. I mean. It was my niece's, obviously, the niece's birthday party. Um, but Friday night was our company wide party where, man, you know, sometimes like you, you, you'd think that the execs would be the ones who tell you not to drink. But man, I guess because they were comping all of our, our cabs in or sorry, cabs, Ubers in and Ubers out. They uh, just like to waste money. So, um, yeah, I was uh, recovering from from that on Saturday. Uh, this past week wasn't hasn't been the greatest because because you know normally I'd be watching a lot of wrestling, but no, I feel like now that vacation's coming up for for like the winter break, um, everything is due yesterday. So I was like, what the like what like you people had all this time to tell me these things were gonna be due, but no, everyone's like, can you help us with this? Can you help us with this? I'm like, oh my god. All right, fine. So yeah, it hasn't been a great week for watching wrestling for me at all. That's for damn sure. Well, that's but unfortunate because I... <laughs> there was a lot of great wrestling that mm. happened this week. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there was a lot of interesting things that happened. And, and you know, so you picked the wrong week the wrong not week. to watch Stardom. <laughs> well, I mean, I watched Dynamite and made, I, I assume, I made the assumption that if I was to judge wrestling by Dynamite standards of last week, it would just be average, right? <laughs> right. That was it. Well, then it's good that I watch Stardom <laughs> so that you will get some non-average wrestling to talk about. So uh, anyway, shall, shall we get into some news? Let's get into it. Okay. Well, in the news this week, speaking of Japan, which I like to speak of Japan frequently <laughs> these days. So speaking of Japan, we had an interesting item break late last week that Sasha Banks will be appearing at Wrestle Kingdom 17. And as the week went by, we got a little bit more information. Here's what we know as of this recording. Sasha Banks has agreed to terms for multiple dates with New Japan Pro Wrestling, but re-signing with WWE is still a possibility. There is no official deal with New Japan, and her appearances with New Japan are not booked through WWE. Um, Pro Wrestling Insider originally reported that Banks is scheduled to attend Wrestle Kingdom 17 on January 4th, and Meltzer confirmed this on Saturday. Um, Meltzer has clarified she will appear, but she will not wrestle. Um, Banks mm -hmm. WWE contract is set to expire at the end of the year, and the last Meltzer had heard the two sides were far apart on money. Um, she wanted a high number for a female talent in WWE, and WWE still has the ability, if they want to, to freeze her contract post her walkout, meaning it actually wouldn't expire. Point of interest, AEW is, of course, quite capable of affording what she's asking. But that's uh -huh. where that's at right now. Sasha Banks will be, at the very minimum, appearing at Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, you know, this is when this news broke, I was uh, surprised. And I, I thought to myself, wow, what, what is she going to do, right? And it kind of coincided with with uh, you know a WWE contract being um, up, but you're right. Your WWE could technically have frozen her contract, and and up to the time that she walked out, which is it's been like almost it's been more than um, six months actually, right? It's been more than half a year. Like imagine if they froze that, that means that she still owes like half a year on on a contract, right? So which means she wouldn't be able to even wrestle till june <laughs> for being serious here but uh, who knows what happened there um i think it's interesting that she has you, as you said signed for multiple not signed uh, has agreed to agree, appear agreed to yeah, yeah agreed to appear for multiple events in japan um my thought on that is well and she's still in discussion with the contract whatever it's fine mm -hmm. um you know royal rumble happens in january that's january 23rd as we know right yes um so 
you would assume if she if she was going to sign, uh, resign with WWE or is going to resign with WWE, they would want her to come back for the Rumble. Like that's where you'd want her to come back for the big the big reveal for the Rumble and maybe do mm-hmm. like a event for WrestleMania or whatever. Um, I'm interested in this. I really am. Um, I was sorry. I'm, I'm thinking back. I'm curious about this. Right, interested is is me actually being. Oh my god, Sasha Banks, Sasha Banks. I love Sasha Banks. I think she's she's awesome. I don't like what I saw though from the walkout. You know, and and I know you know it, people. You know, you should be fighting for what you're worth, but there's also you know there's there are things that you're under contract to do, right? Contractually obligated to do, right? And as for example, let's say like uh, Ricky Starks called out last week to a certain MJF. You know, I don't no show my my signing events just because I don't want to mm-hmm. go right. Like I have a responsibility for these things, and the whole Naomi Sasha walkout. Like I think that again, Sasha Banks is a great wrestler. I don't think Naomi is the greatest wrestler in the world, but she's not bad. Um, I, I this entire situation I wasn't really a big fan of, and she's been out of the limelight for such a long time. I'm kind of like. At this point, I'm like, okay, but it's not like you're Kenny Omega going away and coming back because I, I knew what I was getting with that, right? The god of king uh, of, of wrestling. So, yeah, I don't know what to think about this. Like, is it is Sasha Banks such a big draw that she can just make appearances and it's that big of a deal? Because if it's just appearances, I don't care. I really mm-hmm. don't. Right? And well, that's no, my and, stance and, on it. And let's face it, I'm not going to care either if it's mm-hmm. to, to be quite honest, you know. Sasha Banks is good. Mm-hmm. She's good. Now, is she Suri good? Is she Kyrie good? There you go. Yeah. Is she, you know, I don't think so. She's never proven herself at that level ever because really all I've ever seen her fight are other WWE talents, yeah. Yeah. right? I've never seen her outside of that setting. So if she does start to appear in a ring, first of all, and New Japan has no female wrestlers on their mm-hmm. roster. So if she's appearing at New Japan, then she's appearing for Star. Yeah. Right. Yep. Is she going to fit in and start him? That's kind of an interesting little. I mean, Tony Storm was there for years. Um, <laughs> Bay Priestley was there for years. Yeah. Um, you know, so they've, they've definitely had, I mean, Alpha Female still wrestles there sometimes as part of, we'll talk about the Neo Stardom army later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So the thing is, though, is that stardom is kind of its own entity. Right. And she would need to fit in in some way. I don't know where that would be. So is she just going to be there to challenge Kyrie for the, the belt? But I mean, why her? Why not one of the people in stardom who's more deserving of that title? So that's that's my problem, right? Like we are suffering from a post punk era where mm-hmm. the next big thing came in demanding X amount of money, got paid and then went off and made a complete fool of himself. Right. Mm-hmm. And an AW now regrets that. Are you going to do the same thing? If you pay her a set amount of money, will she walk out again? Yeah, because I mean, she has a track record now, right? She does. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, See, this if I was the first one, so I'd be like, I have so many good talents on this roster, mm-hmm. so many good talents. We don't need Sasha Banks. Why do we need Sasha Banks? Other than if they're starting to think to themselves that this is becoming bigger, if they're looking at their subscription numbers and going, hey, wait a second, we're getting more and more people in North America. We're getting more and more people in mm-hmm. Europe, right? If they're seeing mm-hmm. themselves grow, then maybe they're, they're thinking to themselves, if we pull in a couple of Western talents that everybody knows, will that bring even more eyes to our product? Yep. Right. And it might, it might, because it, there's a lot of people very excited about this. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, you're going to get like some of the WWE marks that are out there. I'm sorry, fans that are out there going, <laughs> hey, Sasha Banks is there. She'll just win all their championships because, of course, she's from WWE. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think maybe the punk thing is rubbing me the wrong way. Just, just the fact that, you, you know, it's a, it's very it's eerily similar. Like mm-hmm. you, you left another the other company, you signed for big bucks over other people. Mm-hmm. Um, who deserved that money? Um, and then you did what you did, right? So it's kind of like, will Sasha do the same thing if if Tony makes that mistake again, or right. maybe he has something in, in his contract stating that, hey, if you do this kind of stuff, 
your contract is terminated and you're not getting any money for that stuff. That's what Tony needs to start right. doing with his contracts, right? Mm -hmm. um, Thou shalt not disparage the company while you're under contract. Yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah. You know, know that one. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I, I, I. The whole. This, you're right. There are a lot of people interested in this. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. I heard it, and as I said. I'm not excited. I'm intrigued to find out what's actually going to happen because this is yeah. just a kind of like, what's she doing there? Like mm -hmm. now that, and now that you know, she's not wrestling. Right. Well, I mean, exactly. I mean, <laughs> and again, she's making appearances for new Japan, not mm -hmm. stardom. Mm -hmm. So, and they are two different companies. They both are, they're both owned by Bushiro, but they're separate companies and there are no female talents signed to new Japan. So if she's making appearances for New Japan, it's either in the context of the IWGP Women's Championship or she's going to be there in some other capacity entirely, mm -hmm. All right? Manager, something like that. Who knows? I mean, there are female managers or accompaniments occasionally in New Japan, but, but I mean, for what reason? I just, it, it's, it's all very strange. It's all very strange. I'm not quite sure how this is going to roll out. I mean, we will find out on January the 4th, but... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not enthused, but you're right. The CM Punk thing, it's like I just want the wrestling companies that I like to work with <laughs> yeah. what they got. Yeah. Because they have so many good talents. It's what I love about stardom. It's like and we'll get to this with my comments on the finals at uh, the goddess mm -hmm. of stardom. You have these homegrown talents that yeah. you've built up in your system, and then you ignore them for the next new shiny thing that comes along. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 that's that's the the problem, right? That's why I'm I'm not really into it. So like at first I was like, oh my god, that'd be so great if, if Sasha Banks joined AEW. Now I'm kind of like, you have talent. Mm -hmm. Why don't you work with them? Yes, right. Develop them. No, right, hundred percent. So. I mean, we we constantly talk about all the good people they've got in the AEW women's division that they're not using right now, right? Mm -hmm. Or not using well, Serena Deep. Where the heck has she been? I don't know. You know, I mean, that's my point, right? We have all these great talents. We don't need another one. We just don't. Yeah. Sean Ross Sapp um, had interviewed uh, Jay White yesterday. Was it yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday. Day before. Um, and he um, he brought up Sasha Banks. Mm -hmm. And he said to he said to Jay, uh, uh, you know, so Sasha Banks, there's a rumor going around that she's going to show up at uh, in New Japan. Um, they don't know what capacity she's showing up in and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He's like, uh, do you think she'd be a good fit for the Bullet Club? And um, and uh, obviously Jay White was like, oh, Sasha Banks, yeah. He goes, I'd have a discussion with her. And he's like, um, does that mean yes? And she's like, he's like, yeah, I, I would have a discussion with her. So that's Jay White being Jay White. But as I, as I was like watching the Jay White interview, and I'm like, man, do I want some more AEW... Uh, New Japan crossovers because I really want Kenny Omega to destroy you, Jay White. I really do <laughs> want him to do that. <laughs> Take all the belts yep. you can. Right. But yeah, yeah. So, but, the, but the Sasha thing, I'm not as excited as most people are about this. I'm not that excited about it either. I found it interesting news. Yeah. But I'm not excited. Agreed. Because the wrestling I get every week in stardom is better than that. <laughs> so, nice. anyway. So that's Sasha Banks. Um, we do have a quick update for you for the uh, Smash card that's coming to Toronto in um, in January on the same day as the Royal Rumble. Smash is a local Toronto promotion, but for those of you who might be in the area, we have now on the Saturday afternoon, uh, they're bringing in some Triple A talent. Drago and Aerostar are Ooh. going to be taking on Tabernak de Team, which is a uh, local, uh, I think I believe they're from Montreal originally, but a uh, French-Canadian tag team. They'll be taking on a couple of luchadors. Um, we're getting Charles Crowley versus Mike Rollins, match number two. Um, Psycho Mike, that is, of course. Mm -hmm. Jody Threats taking on uh, Impact's Taylor Wilde. And we are getting Jake something, Kevin Bennett, Carter Mason, and Shigi Shige Shigehiro Eri. I have completely butchered his name. My complete apologies. Um, and then we also have The Driver will be debuting on the 28th as well. Interesting. Um, I'm well now knowing that there's gonna be luch stories there. I, I'm in. I, I, mm -hmm. I like that. It's like any type of lucha stuff. I'm in for that. So that's that's gonna be kind of exciting. Um, Jake, something again, like uh, uh, what's his face? Um, 
Sean Ross Sapp brought him up again to to uh, to Jay White, and he asked about him. He's like, you know, Jake something said this about you and how you helped him. He's like, smart man. He's like, you know, I I try to help where I can and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, um, and he talked about New Japan strong and all this other stuff. So. I like like we saw Jake something fight and that was a really good match um yep. that they had um so yeah that's 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 actually a pretty good card plus again you know these this is the updates I mean we already know well the Motor City, the Motor machine, City guns. machine Guns aren't on the poster anymore oh no I know oh, well, I guess we'll see I guess we'll yep. see right this that this could be job. your replacement for the Motor City Machine mm. Guns but these these two guys are very good so uh, um I think that they're going to be if they are replacing the Motor City Machine Guns. They're a very good replacement. They're very good. For them. Cool. I'm I'm cool with that. Then that's all yep, right. Exactly. And plus, we're getting Psycho Mike. Yeah, Psycho Mike's awesome, and he's, he's agreed. Like, like, like he is fantastic from the first time we saw him to now. So. Yep. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So yeah, that's that card. So that concludes the news items I had for this week. You got anything for us, Krishna? Any news? Any denies? Dirt sheets? You know, I think I think last week when um we talked about the the William Regal things, everything was kind of like you know, clarified. I think your news story about Sasha Banks thing kind of clarified everything else because, you know, everyone, everyone is kind of talking about new Japan, Sasha Banks, how Sasha Banks was, there was a rumor going around that she was going to somehow bring in a women's division into new Japan, but I didn't know how that would what? work because it doesn't make any sense, but I'm no. like, whatever people can say whatever they want. Um, and just that, you know, not knowing the, the capacity that it had to be, she was no longer with WWE, but, but you're right. The freezing of the contract could have happened, but you know what, if I'm triple H and I, I hate to go back to this again, would I even care about freezing the contract? No, no. Right. No. Let it expire. Let, let the person go. Like that's, that's it. Mm-hmm. At that point, just, just go. Yeah. I, um, I would, I would let her go out there and prove to the world that she's not as special as she thinks she is. Well, that's the thing. Go out there, prove it, and hey, maybe you prove yourself worthy. Maybe you, yeah, maybe you, maybe you prove that yeah. wrong. Maybe you are yeah. as special as yeah. you think you are. And then you, then you're gonna get the money you deserve. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's yep. it. But I'm, exactly. I'm so sick and tired of everything from MJF to ev- it's just all about oh the baiting <sighs> war and this and that. And I'm like, you know, I understand things like uh, like wrestling. Like it's a job. You, it's about money. You know who never talks about money? The elite and the actual wrestlers who actually love this, the sport of wrestling, right. right? So, you know, and people might say, well, they get paid the most. You don't know that. You actually don't know that. Mm-hmm. And if and if they are, guess what? Deservingly so. <laughs> but you know, you know who else doesn't talk about money? Anyone in New Japan that I've ever heard. I mean, I could be wrong. I haven't been like really into <laughs> it for that long. So you sure Jay White doesn't talk past. about it? No. You know who else doesn't? Will Ospreay. Well, Will Osprey is pretty awesome. That's why. Yes, exactly. And plus, they get all the money they need from, uh, you know, from the 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 uh, the orchestrator himself. <laughs> so there you go. I want to be Don Callis. I got there. Gideon Gray. He's, He's not a want to be Don, Don Callis. Callis. He's the guy with the money. Got He's it. Like got a it. Super got it, got fan got who got decided it. to buy his way into the you promotion. Know, That's his backstory. When you said that he and he and he can throw down too, th- but the first time I saw him in the ring, I was like. Why is he wearing wrestling tights <laughs> and a blazer over it? I'm like, oh, that's why he's wearing it. Yeah, he's, he's about as good as Bobby Heenan in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> that's dangerous, actually. <laughs> yep. He's pretty terrible, but that's okay. Yep. Do you got anything else for us? Or are we going to move on to the no, AEW let's, roundup? Let's, let's move on to the AEW roundup. Okay. So what do you got for us this week? So as I said, this week I didn't have a chance to really l- like watch a lot of AEW. Like unfortunately, mm-hmm. that was my my bad. I I I, knew, I ended up watching the the you know I, won't, I, I hate to say mediocre, but it, it, the average AEW Dynamite that was there, and I ended up watching the Kanosuke Takeshita versus John Moxley match, mm-hmm. and I must say, I don't know if it's Kanosuke Takeshita. Or if it's John Moxley, but if you are going to watch a match this week, a- hmm. any AEW match this week, right? This is Monday to Friday of last week. This is the match to watch. I'm actually going to skip all of Dynamite's <laughs> to tell you this is the match to watch because, as we said, Dynamite mm-hmm. was good, 
but we remember we kind of forced ourselves to choose like a match of the night, right? Yes. Um, even though even though I liked FTR versus the acclaimed, I, I I as I said, I hated the ending. Oh, man, Meltzer no loved me. that match. No oh my way. god, it was his match of the week last week, man. No like out of all way. wrestling everywhere. Meltzer went on and on about this match. I mean, seriously, this match. I don't know how. It wasn't that good. No, it wasn't. No, okay. The sure match itself was pretty good. But I mean, I don't understand. <laughs> Sorry, that was my Siri. Everybody, it decided that I, uh, I was. I see Siri doesn't understand either why Meltzer gave yeah. that match. Uh, Siri's anyways. like, "Sorry, I don't understand what you're asking." Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I don't. I don't understand how he could say that was the best match of the week. Mm-hmm. And he wa- and he watches a lot more wrestling than all of us, I guess. Right? Yeah. Don't forget, but this like, was also before the the FTR Yeah, yeah. Match. I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, the ending for that match cut just threw me off a bit because I was like, okay, so you guys aren't the best tag team. You can't even beat hmm. the acclaimed. Right. right? Right. So so and no no offense to the acclaimed. But um but yeah, uh right away, like if there's one match to watch of mm-hmm. all of AEW this week, you have to go out and watch the acclaimed. The acclaimed. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> to, can, 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 let's take that. Let's rewind that again. Watch the acclaim. No, no, no. Don't watch the acclaim. Uh, watch Kanosuke Takeshita versus John Moxley. Um, Takeshita. What I love about this guy is he fights that strong. I guess it's strong style they call it, right? Is yep. it strong style? Mm-hmm. Right? Where he just hits, and this is what I liked about that match against him and um him and uh hangman as well right mm-hmm. it was like it came out of nowhere i was like hangman's facing off of things who's this, who is this guy right that was like my right. first my first exposure to to Keshta. watching him against moxley i'm like okay is this moxley or is this Takeshita? i'm gonna go as far as saying listen i, I know this, some people are gonna disagree this is Takeshita. like this this guy is just that good Right, like, should he join the elite? A hundred percent, he should join the elite. He <laughs> he is so exciting. Yeah, he he may not be best on the mic or anything like that, but this kid can fight any type of wrestling, and that's the scary part, right? He can do any type of wrestling. You want to do high flying? You want to do do he he does it. You want to do hard hitting? He does it. You want to do any type? He, he just power does it. moves. Dude's this strong it. as hell, too. He's, and he's big. Like, the mm-hmm. thing is, you don't realize how big he is because you're like, okay, well, you know, Mox and, and uh, Hangman are like, they're about six foot. And then you watch the catch in there and you're like, is he bigger? Like, what, what's going on right now? Right. He's just so, and he's so young. Mm-hmm. That's what always impresses me. He's so young. He's like in his 20s still. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so like, and if he's this good in his 20s, how much better is he going to be? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so if you have a ch- chance, go out, watch th- the the vet in in Mox take on uh the the I guess I, I he's not even a rookie at this point. I don't even know what what, what the no call he's him. he's not a rookie at all. Yeah, he's, he's he's been like, wrestling since 2012. So Jesus, he's been wrestling for 10 years. Okay, so <laughs> so go out, watch it. Hard hitting. It's and you know me. I like mm-hmm. fast wrestling. Yes. This is fast wrestling, right? Um, and yeah, no, I like you like just me talking about it is not is is doing it a disservice because it's it's one of those matches where you're like, it's not all lucha stuff for me, mm-hmm. but it works so well. Yeah. Oh, tell right? me about it. The, the 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 elbow shots, the strikes, the moves, and how about that Death Rider spot? nails him with the death rider and he pops up at one out of the death rider that was so cool like and, i completely and, flipped out when that happened and, and you know what it, it's one of those things where you were like you could tell mox has so much respect for this kid mm-hmm. that he's allowing him to do this kind of stuff because oh yeah because not only is to like one of the one of the like most like fantastic wrestlers i've seen in a long time he seems humble about everything he does, right? Yes. Like you see him mm-hmm. and, and and he seems so humble. So I like that. I I I think that he should join the uh the elites. I think that would be amazing if he joins the elite. Um oh, he's just so good. Yes, he's he just really is. So good. Yep. No, and and he's 27 by the way. Oh my he's tw- So wait. So wait, 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 wait. He yes. he wrestled his first match at 17? Yes. Okay, well then, I uh, 
that's that's amazing no good 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 young kid he mm-hmm. it, there's only up like, and this thing there's only up for this kid like i yes. remember when when i said to you the, the one day i forget who he was versing and i said has he ever had a bad match right i haven't seen it i haven't either i'd have to go so, check cage match to check all of his matches over the <laughs> exactly. last 10 years but exactly uh, so, so and yeah, then again uh, as we've learned cage match stats don't always tell the actual story of a match because sometimes they blame Britt baker when it was tony storm's fault when it's but, you know. fully yeah, the other person mm-hmm. yeah so so for me i i would say again one match for AEW. apologies for not watching all the matches this week Takeshita versus moxie and you know i, I know that's gonna slightly give away who i'm gonna choose a wrestler of the week but we'll get to that when we get to that <laughs> We'll get to that when we get to that. <laughs> right. Well, we do have a little bit more to report about AEW kind of indirectly with the yeah. ROH final mm-hmm. battle results. Shall we get yeah. into that? Let's I'm not going to go through all the results. I'm going to sure. get to the ones that are relevant to what we watch weekly. Yeah. It's almost like ROH now. There was the announcement, too, that they will be having their streaming show now on um, what is it called? Uh, Honor Club. Okay. Yep. So they'll, they'll be streaming over there now. That's where the show is going. Apparently it's not going to be a network deal. I don't have the exact details, so I don't want to report anything inaccurate or incorrect, but from what I can recall, it's going to honor club. Okay. Um, but anyway, the results at uh, ROH final battle, Athena defeated Mercedes Martinez to win the ROH women's world championship. So that's one. Um, so what we wanted to happen happened there. Yep. Swerve in our glory. They beat Shane Taylor Promotions. Lee apparently struck Strickland by mistake near the end of the match. So Strickland walked out on Lee this time, but then Griffey accidentally kicked Taylor in the head and then Lee nailed Griffey with the Big Bang catastrophe while Griffey was distracted. So mm-hmm. they still won the match. But but uh, Swerve walked out on Lee this time. So Ooh. so it looks like they're still on the outs. The Embassy beat Dalton Castle and the boys to take the ROH six-man championship. <laughs> um, apparently, Matt Menard and Angela Parker got into a backstage brawl with Top Flight, um, which um, Menard and Parker actually got the upper hand, and then they cut a promo in the ring about how Ring of Honor is always full of garbage, flippity-floppity pro wrestlers <laughs> and not good sports entertainers. So. Oh, yes. that's so awesome to point yep. out. Um, Wheeler Yuta won the ROH Pure Championship back from Daniel Garcia, apparently mm-hmm. using a series of forearms to the chin to knock Garcia out cold. So he got that belt back. Um, the Briscoes beat FTR in a double dog collar match to win the ROH Tag Team Championship. Harwood submitted with a chain wrapped around his face in what was apparently a brutal match that is also being called by a lot of people the Tag Team Match of the Year, if not Match of the Year. So Ooh. uh the there was a lot of blood in this match too. Mm-hmm. Like I saw some some images from it. I haven't seen it. I plan to go out and at least watch it. Um, but yeah, there was there was a lot of blood in this match. It seems like it was pretty brutal. Um Samoa Joe beat Juice Robinson with a muscle buster to retain the ROH TV title. Yay! <laughs> and Claudio Castagnoli beat Chris Jericho for the ROH World Championship using the giant swing jericho tapped out to the giant swing what? on its 27th rotation oh my god castagnoli rotated him 26 times and jericho tapped out on the 27th that's you know what um yeah i thought castagnoli was not gonna win but i'm, I'm, I'm glad he won like i mean as, as we said last time right jericho is going on tour so mm-hmm. it makes sense um athena winning fantastic her her change to this absolute like badass heel um has been nothing but fantastic and she actually talked on a a show recently about why she didn't fit into wwe because she's like they try the sports entertainment stuff but it just didn't work out for her and she realized that she's a wrestler so she wanted to go wrestle so good good on her like Mm -hmm. thank thankfully she carries on this this new persona first because it's absolutely fantastic um the, Did you see uh, the interview with her, where she no, she she blamed Toronto for her new persona? This all started that, in Toronto. That's a that's a nice shout out to Jody Thread. Yes, that's a nice shout out to Thread. Yeah, yep. um, that's nice. That, that's actually nice of her to say that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, the first of all, I I saw the the ending to the top flight match. Mm-hmm. My God, oh, I know, right? That finishing move they used. My Ooh. God, like you know when you think that. When you see Dante Martin, you're like, yeah, this, there's nothing these guys can do that's going to surprise me. And they did that spot. And I was like, yep. what is that? 
I was like, that is yeah. such a cool move, right? So kind of weird that like, Top Flight won that match, right? Yeah, they they won. Yeah, they did. But it yeah. was um there was uh there was there was a one botch in the match. Yeah, yeah. Apparently. Where they thought they thought uh uh Dante his his leg got caught or something like that, mm-hmm. and they, he thought thought he was hurt. Dante yeah. stopped trying to hurt yourself. This is but it, it was it was the um you know the kingdom's uh pro wrestling background and the fact that they're vets uh that the the other the other guy who is not uh, Mike Bennett whose name I continuously forget um actually was able to save him. Oh oh nice yeah. oh that that's cool mm-hmm. that's good that's good yeah um yeah that uh, I mean very interesting that that uh what's this called ftr lost mm-hmm. that's i'm what is okay so uh, and maybe we, we need to talk about this in another podcast but the comment we talked about last time it was all uh, ftr deciding whether what they're going to do with themselves next year mm-hmm. so i don't know if they're like, like they actually are going to go down the indie route and just do indies for like the next year and a bit yeah. um and that's why they're getting like the belts are getting taken away from them but uh, the same thing i heard about this match best match people have seen people are talking about the the, the trilogy of of ftr versus the briscoes and that this is by mm-hmm. far the best one if they had to choose one and if not the best tag team match they've seen all year so i'm like wow that's that's amazing praise so i uh i i, I also want to see that match and see how it is um and yeah and 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 uh yuda and castle only kind of Winning back the belts right before the deal happens. Now, mm-hmm. here's my thing. Here, here's my like. Do, okay, does Yuta and does Castiglione, Castiglione, do they have the charisma required to carry those belts into like the new era? You know, the streaming deal and stuff like that, right? Because Jericho's so fun. He's so fun. Uh, yep. Garcia is so much fun as well. Though I always I'm questioning what Garcia did because he's been kind of like sidelined for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't I don't know. I just don't know. Well, let me put it to you this way: ROH is not based around super charismatic, amazing dudes who hold their championships. It's based around guys who can wrestle first and foremost. Castagnoli can wrestle. Wheeler yeah. Utah can wrestle. They both have charisma. It may not be Jericho level charisma, but they mm-hmm. they can. I mean, Castagnoli can talk. Wheeler Yuta can talk. We saw how he did against MJF. You know, he's no he's no big shot promo dude, but yeah. he's passable. But for yeah. sure, he's come a long way. Um, they'll be okay in ROH. Plus, you know, if ROH is being used as kind of a bit of a developmental, it, it can't do anything but help a Wheeler Yuta, right? He'll he'll get a chance to fight a lot. He'll get a chance to cut more promos if there's going to be a show, right? So uh, but, that's that's not a bad thing. But our, okay. But here's the thing with Wheeler Yuta, he is a main card guy because he's so mm-hmm. good. Yes. Right. To me, ROH in this deal is just getting pushed aside to mm-hmm. something else. Right. That's not uh, AEW Dynamite or Rampage. I would prefer to see uh, uh, Yuta uh, and Castellani only on. AEW TV. Well, I think we right. will. I, I can't see them not being used on AEW television, right? Just because they're also holding ROH belts. I, I get the mm-hmm. feeling it'll be more of a they'll go back and forth. Some mm-hmm. of these guys will go back and forth. Like Samoa Joe will probably go back and forth because he's he has also to. holding the team. He better go back and forth. <laughs> I know, right? And it's like then, but then this is a good place for some of those guys they've signed to ROH and allow that the AEW TV to be used for AEW roster people. Yeah, fair enough. Right, so I like, must say that Wheeler Yuta's music is pretty awesome. So that's why I'm like, I'm gonna. Miss yeah, it, it's it. it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Yes, it's 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 no uh, you know it's it's no uh, it's no uh, Oedo tie or anything like that. Uh, but, you know. It's very video gamey. It's like it challenges FTR for, for the best gamey music. So <laughs> that's why. Cool. Well, speaking of uh, Oedo tie. We have the Japanese excursion report now, because <laughs> apparently I'm just living in Japan now. So <laughs> there you go. Um, the New Japan Tag League update. The finals have been set. Ooh, it is happening it. on December the 14th. I will be watching this with eager anticipation. For the World Tag League, we have Bishamon, which is Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi, taking on United Empire's Aussie Open, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis. Both teams went seven and two in the tournament. Bishaman won the tournament last year. The winner of this match will be facing FTR at Wrestle Kingdom. Please, God, let it be Aussie Open. 
Oh man, if it if it is, I have a feeling that whoever is gonna win is gonna win those belts at the. Yes. At, like, you know, oh. Which wow. I don't want to see them on Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi <laughs> because I may also fall asleep while the belts are around their waist. No, that, that that's not happening because uh, there's going to be a Bucks versus um, uh, United Empire match. It, it's you could see it already setting up for the uh, like Forbidden Door wherever it needs to be ha- happening, right? Um, because again, it's the elite versus United Empire. That's yes. what the storyline is going to be. Well, 2023 will be the year of the elite versus the United Empire, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, it. it's also going to be the year that, you know, the Bucks reclaim their title as tag team of the universe. And uh, they will be close runner up by two other tag teams, <laughs> namely, uh, you know, Aussie Open and Aussie Catch Open. 22. So, uh, and that's it, right? Even um, Jay White mentioned this in his interviews, like, you know, uh, Sean Ross Sapp asked him, so what, what match goes on last? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, you know, is it is it the championship match or is it another match, right? Mm-hmm. And he said, well, you know, you have two guys who are just fighting over some random stuff, yeah, and then you have two other guys who are actually fighting for a championship here. So I I, I don't know if I make my club clear, but I think I am right. Yep. And I'm like, I don't know about you guys, but I want to see those two guys there fighting for random stuff <laughs> in the U.S. title. Oh, exactly. No, he doesn't count that as, as, as anything, right? It's not. It's not the I, IWGP. Well, he he has a point. It's not the big belt, right? Um, it it is the number one belt in all of wrestling right now. But let's, simply let's, let's because think. the idiot who currently holds the AW one changed it into something weird, and so it no longer counts as a professional oh, wrestling title yeah. until it's off of him. He's, so he's Jay right. White is currently the holder of the number one the, title in professional yeah. wrestling. Fair enough. Fair enough. And that's the thing, right? It's like it's like. I get the the Osprey Omega match is 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 for a belt. Does anybody care about the belt? Like let's be no. real, I, like, no one cares about the belt, no, right? No Everyone one cares, just about, cares the about the two people who are going to go at it. So mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I um if that's if that's true, and twenty twenty three is shaping up to be the year of the elite versus uh, the United Empire, we might be up for like the biggest feud of all time, yes, of all time. Oh, I'm I'm oh, so excited! I'm so yep. excited. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Almost as exciting. No, it's it's well. This now 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 of course this isn't as exciting. But the <laughs> Super Junior Tag League, Yo and Leo Rush will be taking on Ace Austin and Chris Bay of the Bullet Club. Ace Austin and Chris Bay are a team that you would really really like. Of course, you'd like most of these Super Junior Tag Teams, but Ace Austin and and Chris Bay, they're incredible. They fight in Impact right now. Mm. And um, they're also members of the Bullet Club, and they're really, really good. I'm hoping they beat Leo Rush and Yo. Leo Rush and Yo are good. I enjoy them, but they're the matches that I've seen with them. They're a little bit sloppy in places, mm. right? Like they don't quite gel as a tag team as much as I'd like them to. And Ace Austin and Chris Bay have been wrestling together for quite a there while, you. and they are—they're just one of those tag teams, you know. And they do all like they can do high flying, they can do hard hitting, like they're. They're just so good, and I would love to see them because the winner of this match takes on TJP and Francesco Akira at Wrestle Kingdom for the IWGP Junior uh, Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. And if that's that could be like very close to being a challenging, well, won't challenge Omega and Okada (laughs) or Omega and Okada, Omega and uh, Osprey, but um, it could very well be the number two match of the night. And it, it, that would be United Empire versus Bullet Club. If 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 yes, it is. It's right? it is definitely United Empire versus Bullet Club. So there you go. Yes, and very interesting. Do you think do you think United Empire can come up, come up with all the gold, or do you think they're gonna at least lose one? <sighs> I have a f- TJP and Akira have held these belts for a little while now. I have a feeling that if any of them are gonna drop, it's gonna be them. But then that would leave the belts with an Impact tag team essentially, because they wrestle in Impact more so than they do in new japan mm, okay fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Okay. so yeah because they're outsiders but we'll get to outsiders later um <laughs> so what do i think i think ozzy opens going to beat ftr i think um i think will osprey see that's the one that's in doubt right kenny omega could definitely beat will osprey so and it would carry the story i mean we'll have to see as we get closer to the date i'm sure more things will happen and so. also the finish, right? We have to think mm-hmm. about the finish as well. Like, like yes. anything can happen, which can easily drive the story further. So, oh, of course. I mean, that's the thing. It's just such a great story that it can go in either direction and still be a great story, which is what makes the match phenomenal because you could do either outcome and be I phenomenal. Just, 
I just wonder if like they're gonna play this like the Pac Omega series they had where like Omega totally overlooked Pac like mm -hmm. he was nothing. Yep. And Pac beat him fair and square. Yeah, exactly. Um, um yeah. and then the second match, like Omega just came back and like everything was was trying to like just beat down Pac, right? So yep. Ooh. It's a great story. Like you see, you see it a lot in a lot of promotions that know what they're doing with storytelling, like Stardom, where you know you get this a lot, where you have the the um, older vet just not taking a youngster seriously whatsoever, and then they get the victory on them, and then all of a sudden they need to be taken seriously. So mm, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll okay. see. I mean, you can hardly call Osprey an up and come coming no, youngster, and, and but that's uh, it. Like, and yeah. he's not, and, that, and that's mm -hmm. the thing, right? You, like, we're not in any way call him up and coming it's just that their feud is so good yep. right and exactly. then nothing nothing's happened yet like yes they fought against the elite university the, um, the iron empire fought already mm -hmm. but not like this no not like this not <laughs> not with these stakes not on mm -hmm. a stage like a wrestle kingdom you know so uh and that also brings in like well the bucks won't be there so yeah but will the bucks be there on the follow-up show in january hmm i we know we know the bucks are not going to be there yeah, so well, Meltzer has said they won't be there. So because that would be of course a very that's just a rumor. I, I, again, hmm, sorry, it would be a very stripped down dynamite because it's happening on the Wednesday too, right? Yes, it is. So so they might need the bucks on dynamite, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, because both FTR and uh, Kenny Omega will be rather busy. Yep. Nope. FTR are losing their belts, apparently. Well, but, uh, okay. <laughs> yes, they are. Hopefully to Aussie Open and not to Bishamon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? At this point, after what I saw last week uh, yeah. with FTR losing to um, to the Acclaim, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, this, well, this I'm not going to discount Goto and Yoshihashi, right? <laughs> I mean, they're good wrestlers. They're just not my kind of wrestlers, they're wrestlers right they're, they're good wrestlers. they're very competent in the ring they hit hard they're they're like they're skilled wrestlers mm -hmm. they're just not my kind of skilled wrestler wrestlers, right yeah. you know yeah. I, I like you i like my matches to move um yeah but i also occasionally like really really wacky matches which I got a Same. lot of that on Stardom in Showcase uh, last week. I was going to do this with you last week, but you vanished. So this week, I have a pick em for you. I'm going to okay. recap one Stardom match from Stardom in Showcase. I'm going to let you pick which one. Do you want the Falls Count Anywhere four-way soccer jersey match? Do you want the hairdresser match four-way winner gets a hairstyling and shampoo can be used in the match? Or do you want the Trios Exploding Coffin match? I think I'm because I'm you know you know me right. Mm -hmm. I have a T-shirt that says you know like like barbed wire exploding death match right mm -hmm. uh, or exploding barbed wire death whatever they want to call it right like and and I know how scary those matches are are we saw Eddie Kingston pass out from yes such terror. yes absolutely um so I'm gonna go for the the exploding coffin okay match. okay no problem so you you missed out on inflatable balls of soccer things wrapped around people you missed out on a giant inflatable goaltender and people getting thrown through it and um, you also missed out on an actual like pool in the middle of the ring and people like sh actually literally shampooing hair and hair spraying <laughs> hair during a match so that's okay we will now go on to the trios exploding coffin match where we have neo stardom army who we will be talking about later consisting of you nane Taka takahashi and the masked reaper Okay. Taking on Donna Del Mondo, Julia, Tekla, and Mai Sakurai. Um, uh, DDM came out wearing camo pants. They actually looked pretty cool. You got the Reaper starting off with Julia in the ring. The Reaper has really weird mannerisms, but she okay. tosses Julia away. Julia then bounces off of her. The Reaper easily shoulder blocks all three of DDM down, but they gang up on her and rip its skull mask off, but there's a lucha mask underneath. So we never <laughs> find out the identity of Oh, no. the, Reaper. the Reaper. So Nene works over May, uh, multiple strikes, body slam, tags in you. Now you, I got to tell you about Nene and you. Nene is like, she's a veteran of many, many years, okay? Mm -hmm. For, by women's standards, many years. Like at least, she's she was around when stardom started, okay? okay? okay. So she's very good in the ring. She's older. She's in her 40s now. She's older. She knows what she's doing. She's not a small woman. You is like, you and, and, and Nene are kind of like watching the Twin Towers, stardom version <laughs> you is huge oh okay. okay okay short but huge, huge. Okay. yeah like and she doesn't sell for almost anybody 
Okay. So anyway, uh, that's just setting you up for who these two are. So you does an avalanche in the corner to May. May attacks her, but you totally no sells it, chops her down. May slaps her, and that has an effect, but you chops her down again. <laughs> but she misses a follow up. She likes to use sentons and like top rope splashes and things because of her size. Um, May hits a second rope drop kick. You know, Julie, the Julian Tekla, of course, they can't Irish whip you. She's too big. So they um, they try to double team her. So they go back and forth for a while. You goes to the turnbuckle, but Julia kicks her off the rope into what's left of the coffin. So there was a coffin at ringside, right? Okay. The coffin is totally destroyed. There's just like pieces of a coffin lying around on the ground. So at this point, I'm thinking, how are they going to do an exploding coffin I, match that when was the coffin my, is in pieces? That was going to be my question. Yes, continue mm -hmm. though. Yes, okay. So I'm sitting here looking at these coffin pieces going, uh, what happened? Um, <laughs> but after the money ball incident, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, I, <laughs> I'm now expecting things to break when I'm watching Stardom. <laughs> so there's Nene uh, suplexes uh, Tekla. There's a, the Reaper does a senton. Nene does an Inzugiri. These are all done to Tekla one after the other, but she manages a head scissors and all, and then all three running face washer on the ropes, uh, followed by a face buster attack for two. Nene gets a German off on Julia. She responds with a back suplex. We got a pretty standard match going on. You know, these three teams are going at it pretty hard. You intercepts with a crossbody. She does those running crossbody where she like jumps through the air and like don't forget how big I said she was. She can literally yeah, do like a weird. running crossbody where she takes out everybody. It's not a terrible move. Uh, her cannonballs also look vicious. So uh, anyway, they eventually start brawling outside the ring. So mm -hmm. Nene goes over to the owner, like Stardom's owner, who sits at a, a commentary table usually by ringside, and she wants to beat him up now. Um, who she then tosses a he tosses him onto Julia. Julia drags Nene then once she gets the advantage back to a giant casket that's at the back of the arena. So I'm like, oh, here's the and I mean it's it's like this gigantic prop casket, like it's yeah. huge, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so she drags Nene to the casket. They both fall in and they're fighting inside of it. It looks like a high school play prop. <laughs> so, so now all of them, all six of them now are out brawling by the casket except the Reaper. So they toss you in, but the Reaper saves them from having the casket closed, all right? So then uh, the Neo Stardom Army picks up all three members of Donna Del Mondo, drops them in along with the owner of Stardom. So they slam him inside too. He's like this poor old man. And then they close the casket lid and they turn and run. Alarms go off. There's sparklers, right? It's like the same thing. Just picture the exact same setup okay. from okay, the okay, AEW okay, one. Okay. Same sirens. Sparkler starts smoking next to the coffin. And there's a few firecrackers. There's a bit of smoke. And that was the end. It, it was almost like, I don't know if they did it as like a joke to imitate the AEW <laughs> one. Did. Because that's exactly what it looked like. It literally looked like the AEW <laughs> exploding fire deathmatch coffin. That thing exploding. I... I... You know, when you when you had the build up coming, I was like, I know exactly what's going to happen here. I and then when you said, it, I'm like, yep, this has to be a, a poke at AEW and mm -hmm. and their exploding death match, uh, Barbara death match. Um, you know what? At least, uh, listen, I like this. I like when people have fun with with with, with this kind of stuff, right? Because because it shows you that everyone's aware and stuff like that. <laughs> but the funny part is that you you'd expect this from from like stardom and stuff like that, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't have AEW money. No. So they shouldn't be able to afford like a dynamite and some of that, right? So, so um, th this match seems pretty wacky. It seems like yeah. a, a lot of wacky stuff. Like again, did I miss why they're beating up the the owner of New Japan? Or oh, sorry, Stardom. Well, I mean, they're the Neo Stardom Army. They're from outside of Stardom, right? So they're they're like outsiders coming in. But why they wanted to hurt the poor owner, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I I, I don't understand. They just did. So and then because, you know, I don't speak Japanese, Ridiculous. right? So I don't always catch all the connotations of these matches. But uh, yeah, this this was this was pretty great. But I got to tell you, my favorite of those three I mentioned was definitely the hairdressing match. That match was so much fun. But so wait, 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 the hairdressing match. Mm -hmm. So the winner mm -hmm. gets their hair done. Yeah, they get a nice hair. haircut at some point. Okay, right? All right, all right. 
Did yep. the winner get a nice haircut? Like, did well, we didn't good? see it because you know they had to oh. clean up the ring and oh. stuff. Because by the time they were done, there was like soap and shampoo all over the ring and water and and you know people had had like uh, one point one one uh, one woman put the other in a camel clutch and was like trying to make her hair stand up with hairspray while she was in the camel clutch <laughs> and it was it was so ridiculous. But anyway, awesome. I was that's laughing my awesome. ass off during that match. But that's pretty damn awesome, not gonna lie. Yep. No, it was. It was pretty. I like that they can do an event like that and just have fun. Yeah. Anyway, that's cool. Yeah. But then they got serious again. Back to the Goddess of Stardom Tag League Finals that happened on December the 4th. And I've watched all the matches leading up to this. Very excited for the finals. So I'm going to highlight a couple of matches here for you. The first match I'm going to highlight is simply the uh, quick shout out to one of my new favorites, Saki Kashima of Oedo Tai. Uh, her team, um, We Love Tokyo Sports, which is her and Fukujin Death, the sad clown that I've, I've mentioned before. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, who who yells about death a lot and um, tries to hit people with newspapers and puts out cigarettes on their back and stuff. Um, but Saki Kashima is her her tag partner. And Saki's good. Like, she's she's solid. She's quick. She's, like, small, high flyer a lot of the time. Um, and she was fighting against Karate Braid, which is Suri and uh, Inaba. And they're good and shuri of course is top of the top of the heap in stardom right now right so when they got in the ring to start the match off um you you saw you saw um inaba declare that she was going to go in the ring first so then Mm -hmm. masaki was like okay i'm going and then shuri pushes inaba back so she can go and then she's like no she's going and she pulls out fukujin death (laughs) it's like she's starting now because she wanted nothing to do with shuri (laughs) and then she's turning around arguing with fukujin death and then Inaba's is back. So Saki goes. And so Saki's like, okay, I've got this. And she turns around. She's arguing. They swap again. The bell goes. She turns around. She's facing Shuri. She's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> then at one point, the match goes on. She tags out very fast to Fukujin death. Mm-hmm. Um, Shuri had uh, pinned Fukujin. And so she grabs Shuri, pulled her out of the ring, and then realized what she had done. And there was this look on her face where she was like, oh, no, I did that. And she ran away. <laughs> She pinned Shuri in the match Ooh. with the Kishi Kese. This is this is what I mean about wrestlers. One of her finishing moves is mm-hmm. a sort of modified crucifix pin. Mm-hmm. It's her finisher, and it, it works. She it works. She got Shuri with it. She caught her by and eliminated Karate Brave from contention in the finals. It was such a cool finish because it came out of nowhere. And she actually beat Shuri after all that. So you see, that was a really cool and really fun match, but not one of my matches of the week. <clears throat> I just wanted to give a quick shout out because I enjoyed watching that match quite a bit. One of the better matches uh, was uh, Aphrodite taking on Melter. Now, Aphrodite is Utami Hiyashita and uh, Saya Kamatani. Melter are the current tag champions with uh, Tam Nakano and Natsupoi. And if Meltier wins this, they secure their victory in the block, even though they're the tag championships. Otherwise, they tie Aphrodite. And because if they lose to Aphrodite here, then Aphrodite gets the tiebreaker, defeating Meltier and becoming the top of the red block. Um, Anyway, Meltier goes for a handshake. Aphrodite denies it. This match was so great. So many moves, so many counter moves. It's exactly what you'd expect from two of the best tag teams in the world. And I said tag teams, not women's tag Mm -hmm. teams. Tag teams. The end comes when Natsupoi, this was after quite a bit of time in this match, Natsupoi counters the Star Crusher, which is um, Saya Kamatan. He's one of her many finishers. It's basically like a, it's complicated to describe. It's like a fisherman down, um, melt, uh, what do you call that? Mits- Michinoku driver, I believe. Yeah. Anyway, it's hard, it's hard to describe, but that's what it is. And into a fairy blink, but Utami interrupts. Fairy blink is a, another one of those um, cool wrap-up pins which is why it's called the fairy bling because mm-hmm. Natsupo is doing it. It's everything she does has fairy in it somewhere. Got so it. fairy bling. But Utami interrupts them. Utami then hits Tam with an Argentine power bomb. Um, Saya goes to the top and a firebird splash, which is like a 450 on Natsupo for the three count. But this was just the end of such a terrific match of these two teams going back and forth for the whole thing. Um, lots of great moves. They pin the tag champs clean, which then ties them with Melter, like I said, and they get it. So Aphrodite, likely my favorite uh, tag team in stardom mm-hmm. maybe tied with black desire which is starlight kid and momo watanabe but goes to the finals so that's great and in the finals because somehow or other seven up which is nane takahashi and you 
Neo Stardom Army came out of the blue block to make it to the finals, which people were already kind of like, what? They <laughs> got out of the blue block? So we have my favorite team in the tournament taking on my least favorite team in the tournament. <laughs> so Aphrodite, literally this match happens as soon as the other one finishes. So Aphrodite oh, just fought. They Well, they went back out and got their entrance again. Oh. But they just walked out. Like they weren't yeah. even doing theatrics or anything with it, right? They just walked out because they were exhausted from having like, I mean, look, Seven Up just fought previously in the evening, but it was like an hour or so ago, right? So anyway, this match starts off. I mean, Seven Up dominates because they're big, right? I mean, they're much larger than Sai and Tommy. And um they dominate Sai until Utami helps out. Aphrodite gets the advantage for a bit. Nene and Utami had a great exchange. They sat facing each other, slapping, rising, exchanging forearms. Then Lariats, Nene kicked Utami, blocks a German, but then Utami hits an air raid crash for two. Comes back with a belly-to-back pile driver. They run at each other. Both are down. It was such a great little segment, right? Utami yes. dodges you, sent on, sliding Lariat, nails the Argentine drop on you. And I was kind of like, well, that's good. Tags in Saya, but you got the advantage on Saya again. Um, Saya, uh, you does this roll out of the ring where it's like she pretends she's going to dive because, I mean, a woman that size doing a dive would kill. But she kind of runs and then she lies down and does like almost the Orange Cassidy roll out of the ring. But she does it on top of the people that are outside the ring. <laughs> so, it's kind of a silly spot. But this time, like Samoa Joe, they dodged. So she just <laughs> rolls out of the ring and falls on the floor. And uh, this actually, I was like, oh, so the momentum is shifting, right? I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, it, look, why on earth would the Neo Stardom Army win this, right? It makes no sense for 7up to win this match because now you'd have to have this outside tag team take on your tag champs at their version of Wrestle Kingdom, Dream Queendom. So I'm like, well, it's very clear to me Aphrodite's probably winning this match, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, so you get, she she rolls out of the ring. Utami throws you into the ring post and you there's a huge Saya springboard plancha outside to both of the uh, the members of the Neo Stardom army. Um, Aphrodite is exhausted and they're selling at this, but she picks, uh, Saya picks up you, rolls her back in the ring, double shotgun drop kick. We get a Saya axe kick for two, like the momentum's coming, right? You tries to come back with a chop and with a chop dropping Saya, you know, uh, gets a scent on on her for two, but she counters the next lariat um, but you drops her, sits on her, drags her to the rope. But Saya now, this is where it's like, okay, she powers up screaming, right? She pulled a real Takeshita here, powers up screaming. The Hurricane Rana is caught. Like she tries a Hurricane Rana on, um, on you. It's caught. But then Ota Otami comes up, hits her in the back. Saya hits this massive avalanche, like Frankensteiner, basically. And only gets a two count. You kicks mm. out. I'm like, ooh, okay. So you chops her down again. Utami arrives. They hit a double back suplex. Like you just, you can feel the momentum building in this match for Aphrodite, right? Utami lifts up Saya they, and does a splash off her shoulders. So she puts her up on her shoulders and Utami and uh, Saya does a splash down for two again, right? Saya climbs the rope, but you dodges the Firebird splash. And then they drop kick Saya and the momentum starts to shift again. They dodge and Utami accidentally kicks her own partner. The the seven up piles them in a corner for a double cannonball. They drag Saya out, but Saya kicks out again. You lifts her up for the last ride, which is her finishing move, her big finish, like the one she only pulls out when she really needs it. Um, Saya reverses it into a Rana for a massive near fall. I totally bit on this one because she got her up and she just flipped down, rolled her up. I'm like, oh my god, mm -hmm. and. Man, it was close, but you kicks out. Ugh. Sire roundhouse and a high kick, but then you cannonballs her up against the ropes. They lift her into a double crucifix bomb pinner, but Utami interrupts the pin. Nice. So I'm like, okay, there's still hope. You sets up Saya, climbs to the second rope and hits the splash and Saya kicks out. So I'm like, oh my God, it's still going. Lifts her for the last ride, hits the last ride. I'm like, where's Utami? Oh my God, get her out. You pin Saya Kamatani and seven up wins the tournament <laughs> now i'm on top of the match first this match yeah. was phenomenal like phenomenal back and forth so many moves so many counters you know you, you selling for utami when she wasn't selling from with anyone else in the tournament i mean th mm -hmm. this was just you had you know one of the greatest tag teams in the face of the planet facing off against like essentially the twin towers of the women's of joshi wrestling right yeah. And uh, Nene is just so good in the ring. Use use good. Um, 
I wouldn't call her phenomenal, but she's solid. She knows her role and she plays the big woman really well, right? So yeah, anyway, the thing was, you could hear a pin drop when this match finished. The Japanese crowd was just like dead quiet, like, oh, oh they no. won. Oh, okay. And so Meltier came out and like, you know, was like, okay, so you want these? And Meltier was hilarious. They were like singing at them because Nene used to be part of this idol group and they were singing one of her songs back <laughs> at her. Because, <laughs> you know, Meltier is very much into the whole idol thing in Japan, right? So they're, they're, they're very elaborate entrance and everything else. So anyway, yeah, it was, it was, it was good times. Um, I love Meltier for that. I can't wait to see them beat seven up at, uh, at dream queendom, but this was one of, of three title matches announced on the show for dream queendom. And all three of them involve people who are not actually in stardom. So Azumi is taking on, I forget her name, but uh, someone from the outside for the high speed championship, the, um, the artist of stardom championships are being taken on by prominence led by suzu suzuki that'll be a good match but they're not part of stardom and um who's taking on the future oh is it amy sarai has got the and oh i think she's actually taking on someone in stardom for the future of stardom title i think but it's it's largely i could be wrong on that too it is like we'll talk about the card next week but it's largely a bunch of outsiders taking on stardom talent for whatever reason. And you've got all these amazing, amazing, amazing wrestlers in stardom that deserve the shot. So it was really like taking this giant balloon after a year that stardom has had. I mean, the last two years for stardom have been off the charts. Incredible. Now you've got Utami or not Utami. You've got, um, you've got Shuri taking on Julia for the red belt at dream queendom. That's going to be phenomenal. But yeah, it was it was very deflating to say the least. This is my match of the week. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was it's an amazing amazing match. I would recommend anyone to go watch this match, right? Because I mean, the selling, the story, the moves, everything. I mean, you it's got all three. It's got high flying, it's got power, it's got it's got strikes, it's got like just story for days. Such a good match. I just hated the outcome because mm, I'm yeah. like I don't like seven up winning things. I want them to lose things. So now they have to, now I have to cheer for Meltier. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's, I actually have to cheer for the, the idols, right? Fine. <sighs> anyway, so that, that was stardom this week. Nice, nice. It, so- it sounds good. I mean, like, obviously, like, as we, as we, as we prefaced this earlier, we didn't watch the Ring of Honor uh, pay per view. Mm-hmm. We heard great things, so we can really judge what we've seen this week. Um, I, I, mean, I, mean, I have a sneaking feeling a, a hardcore match probably wouldn't beat this for me anyway. I mean, I don't care how good people think it was, but I mean, hitting people with chains and throwing them on chairs. Okay. I mean, you're going to have to go the extra mile for me to get a hardcore match on as my Maybe, match maybe the but... Yuta versus Garcia match. There are a lot, a lot of matches there, right? That's true. I mean, that's true. I mean, that's true. It, but, uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we haven't seen it, but I mean, we can go with, as you just said, your your match of the week. My match of the week has to, again, as I said earlier, it has to go to um, Takeshita versus uh, Moxley. Great match. Mox, when are you going on vacation? I still don't know right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's really good like having Takeshita there and it's such a big w for for aw like oh my yeah. god what a good signing well you you know mox was sick during that match too right i didn't know that actually yeah no he he and Re- that's why renee wasn't on dynamite last week she was sick and so was mox but mox showed okay. up and wrestled anyway this guy really does just love wrestling yeah <laughs> my god he really really does the man breathes pro yeah. wrestling but uh yeah so anyway your wrestler of the week was there ever a doubt i mean kanosuke Takeshita like phenomenal that's it just absolutely phenomenal and this kid is only going to get better like this i'm excited that he signed with wwe whoa i'm excited he signed with aew (laughs) um because this is this is this is awesome he he deserves it um we get to see him on tv more often now Mm -hmm. right it's like when when osprey showed up for, uh, before uh, Forbidden Door, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy's wrestled like four matches on yeah. AEW TV. Like we were treated to that. Now, now you have this. Just yeah, this is amazing. Like I'm so happy he's here. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's amazing. I love watching Takeshita wrestle. I'll, I'll watch any match the dude is in. Seriously, my wrestler of the week, 
is Aphrodite. I got to give it to both of them. Utami Hayashita and uh, Saya Kamatani. They keep appearing in my uh, thing of the week uh, often enough, right? Mm-hmm. But they're just so damn good. And yeah, they, they were just, they put on two amazing matches in one night, back to back. And what more can you say, right? I mean, to go out there and put on, I mean, the first match was short. It wasn't exactly yeah. super long, but still to go out there and wrestle at that caliber, back to back for those finals and to put on the matches that they did I mean, these two are just, they're so good. So good. Um, I know I'm starting to sound like a shill for stardom, but, uh, but <laughs> again, it is, I, it... I keep asking you how much do they pay you, but you won't tell me, but uh, okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, sorry, man. Sorry, man. My, my Oedo tie sweater is coming in. Man, so. anyway. The, uh, yep. Well, I think that just about wraps us up for this week. Doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Okay. Well, As the great one always says, and I'll do it right this week. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. And good night. Bang. Good night, everyone.